Hi everybody and welcome to this fly tying tutorial. As you can see I have a special guest with me today. This is my uncle, John Camisa. I've referenced him in a lot of videos. I've been uh, really fortunate over the last 20 some odd years of fly tying to have him as a mentor. Um, I've really looked up to him in terms of fly tying and fly fishing. He's just a, a master of our trade. Uh, more importantly, when it comes to this fly tying, he just does some incredible stuff and he just has an excellent uh, finished product. So we're just going to talk with him for a few minutes and then um, he's going to tie one of my favorite patterns to fish and it's called the Humpy. I am constantly begging him for this, this fly to put more on my boxes because I'm sometimes a little too lazy to tie them. But before we get to that, um, let's first just get into a few background things. Uh, Uncle John, do you want to tell them how long you've been tying flies for? Oh, nearly uh, 35, 40 years. That's a really long time. Yes, it is. So you've seen a lot of stuff probably change over the last yes. 30 years. Some enjoyable, some not enjoyable. Okay, okay. Will you tell everybody how you got into fly tying? Well, I come home one day and my son was there and he belonged to the scouts and he was going for a merit badge. And the merit badge had to be fly tying, okay, or a sports. So I says, okay, we'll, we'll get into this. We'll tie some flies. We'll get a book and we'll, we'll tie it. I had never tied a fly before, okay? So uh, what I did was I, I, I got a, uh, a real cheap vise, you know, and uh, we started out, we start we, we put the hook in there, of course, you know, and we, we start putting each step on. And on the finished product, I told him, I said, boy, that looks real good. I says, but how do we t put our leader in there? It's all covered up. The eye's all covered up. No way of putting that fly on. I mean, <laughs> it's... An amateur doing something that should have been taught by somebody else. That typical okay. rookie mistake. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, that's great. Then you've been tying ever since. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. And the one thing um, all of you have to understand with my Uncle John, he is such a huge proponent of using natural materials versus synthetics. I know our cousin Helen will be upset with that statement, but it's he's just been truly just on the bandwagon for natural since the first day I started tying. Is there a reason why? Well, I come from the old school where we we tied with uh, all all the natural things that we had at the time, and they were all fur, tinsel, and feathers. Okay, yeah. and that's what we used. And I don't know, it looked better, and I enjoyed it. Okay, because I like to hunt, and in hunting, I got a lot of that material, you know, freebie. And I'm I'm sort of a guy that likes to get things for. You know, handed to me. You know, and sure, and that's what we did me as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great. And then, um, there's only two other things I will mention before we get into this this humpy. I know, um, related to we'll say the fly tying, you also used to really love to tie salmon flies. Yeah, I know yes. you have a fly I think on hold right now. Do you plan on getting back into that at some point? Uh, maybe, maybe. I, you know, you know, Tim, you you probably understand that salmon flies are takes longer to tie, maybe two, three hours. Maybe more sure. than that, okay? And I, I figured, am I going to fish with these salmon flies? No. Okay, so should I keep tying them? I enjoy tying them. Yeah. I probably might get back into it, you know, to, to get better at it, you know. But uh, yes, yes, I enjoy tying them. All right, great. Then the last thing, um, and I'll, I'll kind of make everybody else aware about, Michael John is also a bamboo fly rod builder. He's wearing a shirt from the Canadian K, and uh, one of our favorite group of guys, some builders up in Canada as well. And uh, he's such a great builder, he's taught me how to build bamboo rods. He actually even taught my wife how to build a bamboo rod. It was a secret gift for me. And he's just an incredible um, bamboo rod builder. Is there something that prompted you to get into that phase of this this game? Well, for years, you know, I Tim, you know I, I, I wrapped uh, the graphite rods for years. And I always wanted to build a bamboo rod, and my friend... Uh, Jeff Wagner in Cleveland, who is a professional at it, you know. I asked him one day, and I was probably around 65 at that time, or maybe a little bit older. I says, Jeff, I says, do you think I can make a bamboo rod? He says, hell yeah, you can make a bamboo rod. He says, John, if I was you, I'd get started right away. Meaning, <laughs> you might not get done. And you have. You've yes, quite yes, a few over the yes. years. Okay, well, with that said, we won't take up too much more of your time this little interview, but we'll get to the, the humpy. My Uncle John was actually tying one. He's going to just finish up that fly. We'll show you a little bit about the pattern. We'll give you a list of the materials, and then he will actually tie one, give you a complete tutorial for the humpy. Here's a finished look at one of my uncle's humpies. Uncle John, will you tell us just a little bit about this pattern? This, this pattern here is basically used in moving water. Probably fast water is probably better, but not to say that it can't be used in still water also, but it's probably better used then, okay? And uh, the origination of it 
is probably way back and it used to be called a horn hornburger and now it's called a humpy okay so you can go from there what whatever you want okay but it's still a very good fly okay and it's tied with different color bodies okay and different hackles and everything else i innovate a lot of things okay i you, you'll see that because i'm not not a person who uh likes to uh confirm to uh the basic fly okay? okay and will you show everybody i don't know if you can point to it the the back of the fly what where it gets kind of its humpy name right right i'll turn it a little bit to you okay right there this this part here right here is, is why it's called a humpy because it's pretty obvious that it has a hump on it okay 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 and the fly is tied in such a way that the humpy is there and then your wings come off of your humpy eh? there you don't add the wings to the humpy the wings are part of the the humpback okay and then the hackle course goes on okay? okay and that's part of the thing that makes it such a frustrating fly for oh, a lot yes, of beginners it is. to yes, tie it is. so yeah, i know yeah. there are shortcuts to putting the wings on putting the hump on oh, yeah but it, it's tied in different ways right now i've seen it tied with synthetic material for the wings you know but i sort of frown on that a little all bit. right great but anyhow all right. Well, then we're going to put up the, the material list so you guys have an idea of what we're going to be tying with. Okay. And then Michael John's going to take you through all the tying steps. All right, Uncle John, why don't you uh, explain to these guys what's going on here? Uh, I'm going to tie a humpy for you, the one that I showed you, but it's going to be a little bit larger. But uh, humpies probably should be tied in a size, I'd say, 14. 16 something larger because you're you're gonna be fishing in fast water and you want something to, that could be seen Okay, Great. Uh, if you use a small one, they're gonna see it too, but it should be a larger fly. We're gonna use a size uh, 16 uh, dry fly hook Barbless of course. I mean Tim's Tim is a fantastic guy for barbless Which uh, sometimes I don't use barbless, That's but right. anyhow, we're gonna go with it. Okay. I I'm gonna use a black thread here it's probably a size uh, six aught six aught is what I usually tie six aught is a very sometimes very difficult one to use it'll break easily okay but you'll learn that, that, how much power you can put on it okay now where I start this fly is in the middle of the hook okay I, I wrap maybe three maybe four forward okay then I, I lock it in then I go back, okay, probably, see when I'm going back, I'm holding this thread and it's locking it down neatly, okay, if you want to cut it off, cut it off, I don't cut it off, okay, I bring it back almost to the tailing position, but not quite, okay, now, for my tail, I'm going to use uh, a moose mane, okay, moose mane is a real stiff uh, a hair, okay, and it, it and it rests. Probably you only need, yeah. If I told you 15, 15 fibers in there, that probably will be it. But you can use less, okay. I've used less, okay. Now I'm going to cut that off right there, and then what I want to do is is to get the hairs out. There's there's a few hairs in there that won't let it stack properly, okay. So put it in your stacker, and We'll tap it down a couple times and see where we come out. Okay, it looks relatively straight. Doesn't make too much difference, but as long as it, it's straight, okay? Okay, now, on the tailing. The tailing should be the length of the shank, okay? Maybe a little bit, better, a little bit longer because a lot of people don't understand that tailing on most flies are longer than the than the shank of the hook, okay? And what I do is, I'll go back and again. Okay, what I do is one, I don't tighten it. Second one, I, I tighten it then so it won't flare out, which it leaves a relatively straight hook and right on top of the, right on top of the shank of the hook, okay? Okay, okay so you have the tail tied in right, right now. Okay. It's going back just about over one hook shank back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's actually past the barb of the hook, okay? And w what I do is I usually leave that in and I go forward with it, okay? Because I'm going to put, I'm going to go halfway up, okay? 
like this, and I'm going to cut those off, okay? This is where, where it starts getting a little touchy, okay? Mm -hmm. This is coastal deer, and it's a real good, real good hair to use for the wings. Now, if you see that, that's about as much as I'm going to use, okay? It's probably as big as a matchstick or something like that, if you know what a matchstick is. They don't use matchsticks anymore, <laughs> okay? That's why I didn't say it. We used to say that. Uh, now, you want to get those hairs out of there, okay? There's, there's, there's hairs in there or fur rather, under fur, that will stop it from stacking, okay? We'll put it in a stacker. Tap it down. Now, we got the hairs that are relatively straight, okay? Relatively straight, and that's good enough, okay? What we're going to do now is, we're going to measure this. What I like to do is, first to cut these Cut these off, okay, straight across, okay, get them straight. Then what I want to do is to measure the shank of the hook, okay. Now, we're going to come back there to the tail, okay. That That's where the wing, that's the shank of the hook. We're going to extend it probably another, 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 another body size or the middle of that, middle of the middle of what we have, okay. And we're going to set it up in the top. And we're going to come up around real easy, real easy, and then pull it down, okay? It's going to flare out, but it's, it'll be fine, okay? Don't let go of these, these uh, hairs, okay? Just keep wrapping back and back and back. I'm hurrying it up, okay? But you can make a neat body. I think you trapped the thread. I'm going to go back one or two. What? I think the thread got stuck between the hook shank. You want to back it around a couple times? It's not back. Yeah, right there. Now you're good. Okay. Okay, we're going back here. And what I do is I, I, I get this all down real neat, okay? And I bring this up, okay? I come back, okay? I lift this up, okay? I don't let it go because the tail's there, okay? It's still mm -hmm. there. You see it? Yeah. Okay, don't let, don't, don't, don't let these hairs go because then you're going to be grabbing a tail and you're going to say, what am I going to do next? Okay, okay, now. We have that up there. Okay, we have the back part of the hump tied on. Uh, my Uncle John has had a change of heart. He's going to actually be using some natural dubbing, uh, some natural olive dubbing for the body. Why don't you take it away? Okay, now you can see how how, how the natural goes on real easy. See it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's different. It doesn't doesn't cling or anything. Okay, and you can add to the place where you need it. Okay, that's probably. A, a plenty right now. Okay? okay, and I see you're using green. Is there a reason why you chose green for this pattern? Yeah, because all of you got a lot of all of the insects that come out and they're on the water, and you probably understand that this humpy doesn't imitate anything, but it imitates everything. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. 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 I'm gonna wrap this on. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now. I have that up, all that, that hair up, okay? Um, I, when I get the the hair up here, I give this a little twist, okay? Because I don't want it to set down on that one side, all, 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 all of it, okay? I am going around, and I'm going to lock that in, okay? I'm locked in, okay? Yeah. Now, I lift that up, which is right in the right position right now. Okay, well, we got the wing up, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm going to separate this, okay? I'm going to try to get, well, pretty even portions, okay? Uh, it's, sometimes it's very difficult. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is make a figure eight in here, okay? Let me get this, okay. Okay, now here, this this is a little touchy here. You you got to wrap this around the wing, ah, uh, maybe around three or four times going up. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go on the other side, and we're going to wrap it around. Okay, what we're doing is separating our wings. Same thing here. 
and then I'm going to come over here then I'm making an 8 right on the top of it okay but I want these wings to set up okay now okay you probably see the wings okay yeah can you yeah angle it okay you oh, see beautiful. how the wings yeah okay and this is what we want to have okay like that now what I'm going to do before I go any further I'm going to cut these pesky little wild things off here but I don't get now one thing about scissors you have to guide them in you don't just grab it and go in there okay because yeah. if you did you might be one soft soft person you'll be sorry about it after okay <laughs> and I'm really glad that you're showing these guys it's okay to modify your fly as you're going you may not lock every single hair or every single piece of fur in there and it's okay to go in there get them out of there get them out of your way don't be afraid if you make a couple mistakes along the way and it's really nice that they're seeing it as an advanced tire that's that's what you have to do to make this fly come out as a great finished product okay my uncle John has it cleaned up now he's gonna tell you a little bit about the hack on how he locks it in okay now I trim the barbs off okay what I why I trim them off is they're gonna be like anchors okay I'm going to lock that in then I'm gonna push my feathers forward so I I can really lock them in okay of course I gotta get the hack on there okay let me try again okay there I got it in this time okay so you're okay. locking it in against those free barbs yeah okay now I've I'll finish off on the front okay now there we are now Tim usually uses his hands to do this but I getting a little older I mean sometimes it'll slip on me but I'm not gonna let this thing slip on me okay got you what color hackle are you using is that a Cree this is a Cree hackle and I use Cree because it, it, it has everything in it it has color it has life you know because if you ever look at an insect it has the bars okay I'm showing you right here see mm -hmm. your bars it has bars along its legs so you want to imitate as much as you can of it okay so I'm going to get one two three four five okay, okay. five turns in the back and I'm going to get one two three and here's a fourth one okay that's all I put in the front four okay okay now I'm gonna lock it in right now okay I'm now you notice that I don't use many half inches I I don't believe in making too much weight to a fly and half inches will make a fly I'm gonna lock that in okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get I'm gonna use my finger as a guide so I can cut that hackle off there okay okay there I cut it off real neat okay sure now I have this half inch tool what I'm gonna do is put a half well wait a minute I got the wrong side I'm gonna make a half inch right here and go over there it is now I've got it I've got it sort of locked in right now okay that's neat for guys who don't know what that that tool is it's called a half inch tool and you're basically just you're putting basically a kind of like an overhand lock where the threads locking against itself and now you can if you look at my uncle's the, the tension on his thread he can release tension on the thread and the hackle yeah, won't go yeah, anywhere now yeah. everything's locked in place he doesn't have to worry about it the only thing he really has to worry about is a fish with really big teeth tearing this fly apart okay now my friend has passed away was a real he was a really a good tire he used half inch tools to make his whip finish okay. what he does is put one two three wraps around your half inch tool slide it up and slide it on there you got you got your slick you got your whip finish okay if you want to do it that way sure on small hooks but sure. on bigger hooks I think I'd go with Tim's method of using fingers okay right now I used to use my fingers all the time even on small flies but I can't see as well as I used to okay so I mean there's a reason there's always a reason so I I always do it twice okay to make sure okay there okay now I'm going to clip this off and if it looks good to you fine what, what I want to see is okay there we are I'm going to show you the fly the basic fly I see a thread around there I didn't like okay you see the basic on the bottom you see your your body in there it's grain which the fish will see okay they're yeah. not gonna they're not gonna see the hump on the back no. and the hackle is the proper size for this this fly okay 
Yeah, and you can really see a real strong profile of those wings that you created. Yeah. They really are just vivid in okay. that hackle. And I like that long tail just to really allow for a little bit more buoyancy. Mm, I Looks see like I have a little... Yeah. I cleaned up a couple things, yeah. consummate. Now, if I want, I can trim this down here too, okay? If, it, if it's... But you know what? I think sometimes a shaggy fly is a better fly than... than uh, then okay. not. Okay. There's one of the hackles got one of the hairs got backed up. Just track. Yeah, and like that's gonna one. happen. There's another one. Okay. You can dress this up as much as you want, but it's not gonna hurt nothing. You got it. Well, thanks, Uncle John. And I hope um again as if you're a beginning tire, understand that we're probably still gonna you know my Uncle John he's only stopping right now because I'm giving him the sign to stop. But the moment I turn this camera off, he is definitely gonna fix up this fly, make it look exactly the way he wants it to look and then it's going to leave his vice. So really take a few minutes whenever you're finished with your beginning flies, just make them look the way they want to look because Correct. you really want just a great finished product whenever whenever that fly leaves that vice. Well, uh, thanks Uncle John. We really, okay, uh, Tim. You know, we really appreciate you um, tying this humpy for us. Thanks to all the, the those of you viewing this tutorial out there. If you have any questions or comments, you know, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you have any questions from Uncle John, you're more than welcome to email me and I promise you I will direct them to his attention, including if you have any questions about bamboo fly rods, he is your expert. Well, thank you to all of you out there and we really appreciate this view.